Hello everyone, we're outside the Friar Development Center as we are joined by three-time national champion and international running sensation, Emily Sisson. Emily, we were talking about how this is one of your first times back in about nearly a year. What's it like to be back on campus? Um, it's good, yeah, I, I do train in Providence a lot um, and I've been spending a lot of time here over the past four years since I graduated and I just, I, know, I love being back. I just have so many good memories of Friar Town, so it's always fun coming back. And Emily, the last time that we actually spoke on camera, you have to go all the way back to the winter of 2015. You're about to head to NCAA indoors for the national title there. You won the 5,000 meter. Outdoors that year, you also won the 5,000 in your last collegiate race. But we would like to know, what have you been up to since then? Yeah, it's funny because it does just seem like that was yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the last four years, I feel like a lot has happened, but not too much has changed with running. Like I still have Ray coaching me and that's going really well. I still train here a lot of the year and I have Molly as my training partner now. I'm running for New Balance, so that's new. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I've just been racing a lot. Did my first marathon back in April. So um, yeah, just been running. And speaking of that marathon, let me brag on your behalf here. You finished in sixth place overall in the London Marathon back in April. You had the second fastest debut for an American woman in the marathon. After the race, you said, and I want to quote you here on this, I think that's a good first marathon. We found what works training wise. Yeah, I'd say so. I think you figured it out there. Uh, what was training for your first marathon like and what was the overall experience? Um, yeah, I think when they asked me about that, I was still kind of like in shock after the marathon because it's such a different event to, like compared to anything else I've ever done. So I was like, I think that went well and, and it did. It went really well. So um, Ray really prepared me well for it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy how it went and I'm excited to do another one. So um, I had a like I'd say I had a very positive first experience, which isn't always the case with marathons because there are just so many variables, so many things like out of your control that could just happen on the day and you spend like three months getting ready for that day. And and, um, and yeah, so I, I think Ray prepared me well, um, got a little lucky with some things and just, uh, yeah, I felt, I felt good on the day. So I'm really happy with it. It was a good first one. Well, that's great to hear. And you talk about marathons, a lot can happen in those 26.2 miles yeah. there. And you said that the race you, you were expecting, you had to throw it out the window before the race. Weather conditions, not that great that day. You talked about in the lead up to the race that adjustments were a big part of training. So what kind of adjustments did you have to make on that morning? And what kind of adjustments were you making throughout the race? Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest um, things I took away from the marathon is you have to be a bit flexible because you spend three months preparing for it and you'd like things to just go smoothly the entire time. But um, sometimes you have little hiccups and bumps in the road and that's like normal. That's part of it. Uh, and on the day, the race didn't go out exactly how we wanted it to go. I think how windy it was and just how other people adjusted their race plans that all contributed to it. But yeah, no, I think having that experience and learning, OK, I need to adjust my plan like during the race was good to practice that when the race was really picking up things spread out so I was on my own most of the second half of the race so um, I just kind of had to like focus on like you know staying like relaxed and calm because you've like like three miles in you still have like 23 miles to go so you can't you can't get all worked up right away so I think just like staying like in control was huge and just like reading my body and reading how I felt was really how I handled it when it didn't go exactly how we thought it was going to so after the London Marathon, you mentioned 2020. I know I don't need to mention this to you, but next year, big year for races, both domestically and globally for you. You not only have had success with this marathon, but you also nearly broke the American record for the half marathon. So I have to ask, what's next for, em next for Emily Sisson? What are you gonna be working towards? Yeah, next year is obviously a really big year because it's the Olympic year. So um, my main goal with that is just making the Olympic team. But I do have a, a lot of goals besides that, like before that even. Um, next week, I'm running the U.S. Track Championships. So I'm trying to qualify for the World Track Championships, which is in Doha in October. I might also like to chase down some American records. I think that'd be a fun goal. Um, those would be kind of fun to go after. And then, yeah, just next year, making the Olympics is my main goal. Um, and then after that, like the Olympics, it comes around every four years. So I have a lot of goals in between those four years. So yeah, American records, um, world teams, just lots, lots of things I'd like to accomplish. And final question for me, besides the race, what was your experience in London like? Yeah, London's amazing. I love that city. I've been, I've been lucky enough to go a few times. And every time I go, I get so lucky with the weather. It's like sunny and like 60 and beautiful. Um, and it's just a really fun city. It was a great atmosphere to have a race there. and. Um, I was telling people how I loved the atmosphere around the London Marathon and they're just like, well, wait till you do like Boston or New York if you love that so much. Um, but no, London was really fun. It's a, it's a great city if you've never been. And that's great to hear. And if we want to see pictures of you in London and elsewhere around your travels, yeah. where do we follow you on social media? Um, my Instagram is M underscore Sisson underscore. And I think my Twitter is M underscore Sisson. Well, once again, we're all rooting for you, Emily. We wish you the best of luck in 2020 and we'll see you around Friartown. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Go Friars. Go Friars. She's Emily Sisson. I'm Nick Rojas for Friars.com.